In this example, we are given a couple of amplifier A1 and A2, and we're being asked to compute the output in each one of them, which is V output 1 and V output 2. So these amplifiers are not necessarily connected in cascades. So if you think about it, um, the output of the first one is not necessarily directly connected to the input in here. It's actually connected to these resistors in here and this resistor, and there's a little bit of looping in here and a little bit of looping in here. So let's highlight what we know and we don't know about it. So in this particular um, example, um, the amplifiers are drawn such as the non-inverting input is at the top as opposed to the bottom. So I'll highlight what I know. What I know in here is the IP zero, uh, IP is equal to zero in here. And of course this IN in here is also equal to zero. I'm gonna call it the IN one. So that should uh, basically be IN one, which is zero. All right, and what else do we know? Well, we know the point in here and the point in here have the same voltage, so there will be, the voltage in here will be 15 volts, okay? That means the voltage, if you follow this wire, you'll see that the voltage in here is also 15 volts. All right, let's do the same type of analysis in here. I'll just basically highlight them in a different color. So what we have in here is IP2 is zero, okay? And we have the IN, two is also zero. That means this one here is I N two is also zero. What else do we know? We know that there's sort of virtual short in here. I know that the point at the, at the positive in here is 10 volts. I mean, this is also 10 volts. So I'll just basically say that this is 10 volts, which means this here is 10 volts. So this is what we know. So now what we don't know is uh, the point in here and the point in here. That's what we don't know. However, we can't write nodal equations in here because I don't know the current leaving in here or the current leaving in here. So I have to find other two points where I can write nodal equations. And the other two points left for me are actually this point in here, which I know the voltage of, and this point in here, which I know the voltage of. So I'll just write nodal equations. And in this case, hopefully you have seen that um, this nodal equation Equation will include the V naught in here, um, and this nodal equation will include this V naught in here. So let me just call them. Maybe I'll call this A and I'll call this B. Let me just highlight them in here. So this is point A and this is point B. So let's write nodal at A. So nodal at A, I'll start by saying, well, this current is zero, so that leaves me this branch, this branch, and this branch, and I'll do that in order. So that will be 15 volts minus the V output two that I'm looking for divided by the two kilo ohm. This is the current going that way. Okay, so now let's take a look at the current going this way in here. Okay, well, the current going in here, it's actually the 15 minus the 10, so I kind of know what it is. It's actually 15 minus 10 volt divided by the five kilo ohm. So this is 10 minus 15 divided by the five kilo ohm. That's good, so we got this, we got that. So that leaves us with this one in here. That's plus 15 minus V output two, um, or actually this is one in here, divided by the 500 ohms. Well, 0 0.5, since everything is in kilo ohms, let me just make sure I do this here, 0 0.5 kilo ohms. So everything is in milliamp, okay? So this is in ohms, kilo ohms, this is in ohms. So let me just make sure I highlight this one here is 0 0.4 kilo ohms. Okay. Um, yep, so this is it for um, point A. Let's do the same type of analysis for point B. So at point B, um, of course, this has to be equal zero. So point B is in here, where is B? B in here, this current is zero, so I don't have to worry about it. So let's take a look at the current down. So this one here becomes 10 divided by one plus the current going from here all the way to here, okay? And that will be um, 10 minus 15 divided by the five kilo ohm. This is basically the opposite of this guy in here. And then what's left? Well, what's left, I believe, well, we got this, we got that. Now we have to go the other side in here. And that becomes 10 minus V output two divided by 0 0.4 kilo ohms. And since everything is in milliamp, um, that equals zero. I believe I capture everything. This is one, two, three, and four. And I got one, two, three, because the fourth one is zero. So now I'm taking a look at these. These are two equations, two unknowns. Frankly speaking, I have one unknown in here, which is V out not. So all I have to do is just um, figure out what V output two is. And that will be 13.6 volts. Now we take this value and we substitute it right here. And that will give us what V output one is. So this value will give me 15 minus 13.6 volt divided by two plus, um, this is basically 15, this is basically five divided by five plus um, 15 divided by 0 0.5 negative or equal um, V output divided by 0 0.5. All right, so that will give me what V output one is 
15.85 volts. So that's it. We have both voltages now and we can compute any currents that we want, whatever it is. So for example, if I told you what the current is going through here, you can tell me it's just simply it's 15 minus whatever the voltage VR2, which is happened to be 13.6, divided by the 2 kilo ohms, and that will be that current.